This is Jack Stanley, and I wanted to talk about the Cine Music System. Now, maybe you've never heard of the Cine Music System, and there's a pretty good reason why it was wildly unsuccessful. A lot of it had to do with timing. Now, what was the Cine Music System? Well, you know, I had a series of conversations years ago. We're talking 30-plus years ago uh, with Theodore Edison, Edison's son. And he used to tell me stuff, and I'd ask questions and let him ramble on, and he was fascinating to listen to at times when he was in the mood to do so. One of his experiments was for long play diamond disc records. Now, let me clarify what I mean by long play diamond disc records. Now, you will remember, starting around 1924 to 26, somewhere in there, they came up with the long play diamond disc records, which was a very, very tightly grooved record uh, that would play, you know, 20 minutes, maybe more on a side. And they were also rather wildly unsuccessful because of several factors. First off, it was an acoustic transfer of an acoustic recording, and you lose a lot of signal recording horn to horn, and that's exactly what they did. I found the paperwork showing how they did it, and it was really quite remarkable how they just basically went horn to horn from a standard and then record it onto a long play. Well, these were pretty unsuccessful, yes. And that's not at all where I'm going. I'm going to a totally different system that was called Cinemusic. And that was designed by Theodore Edison. And the concept behind these records were diamond disc records of 12-inch form. Sometimes they even tried. I think they experimented with something even larger. But it was very, very difficult to do the, the uh, record that was basically covered, you know, with um, condensite. And to keep it steady at, at 14 inches it just didn't work. But um, what they were doing is taking these condensite diamond discs and recording them at speeds of 24, 20, 16 RPM and recording music for movies. Great idea. It's a pity they didn't think of this 10 years earlier, but they were doing this work 1927, 28, and sadly what's happening in 1927, 1928 is the beginnings of talking pictures. And so this whole project kind of like was DOA on arrival. Uh, it, it just didn't go much of anywhere. But there were some very interesting aspects of the Cine Music System. First off, Theodore got to use his, his mathematical mind. Uh, he was a mathematical genius, Theodore Edison. He could fathom the understandings of sound waves. And for the cine music system, he developed horns for playback that would have a speaker at the base of the horn to transfer the sound through it. And what he would do is he would figure out the sound waves and with the sound wave, uh, its transfer, he would put holes in the horns to areas that having that hole there would enhance the various responses. It's really quite fascinating. Now, these were signet horns that he used, and they're pretty much the first type of mathematically designed horn, if you think about it. And so he made these uh, cinemusic horns, but they were like five times the size of the largest um, signet horn made by the Edison Company. These things were monsters. And I remember Theodore telling me about this. 
And this was 30 some odd years ago, as I mentioned. And a number of years later, I happened to be walking with some folks at the Edison site in one of the storage rooms. And there were a whole series of signet horns with holes in various points of them. And I realized right away, and I talked to the people, and I said, I know what these are. These are the horns for the Cinemusic system. It was a magnificent system that never, ever went anywhere. You know, it was fascinating to learn this stuff from Theodore <laughs> as he was talking about it, because the interesting thing is there are aspects of this that you never, ever hear, because they weren't very successful. And I spent time learning a lot from Theodore, and also one of the people that worked with Theodore, a fellow by the name of Harry Fioretti, another fellow lost to our history, we... We uh, uh, don't talk about a lot of that work that took place in the Edison Labs in the late 20s and in the beginnings of, like, 1930. Um, there were recordings made at the Columbia Street Studio by Theodore Electrically, long play, and some of them exist. Um, also, there were radio programs created. There was all kinds of experimentation done. But, of course... It was kind of like uh, spitting in the wind. It was too late. A lot of these great ideas of Theodore's were just too, too distant in the company's history. And by the time that Theodore was doing this, the Edison Company had bought the Splitdorf Radio Corporation of Newark and was involved in radio not in the best of ways, but they were involved in radio with the Splitdorf radio system, um, electronics, spark plugs, etc. And experiments and sound recording were pretty much over. And so the cinema music system pretty much died before it ever became much of anything. But it's good to talk about it. And there's lots of other great stories about that system. And I hope, as I think of things... You know, it's a fascinating thing to mention is that many of us have talked to people and we really should document everything that we talk about, you know, to share it with future generations because, you know, no one in the future is going to have a chance to talk to Theodore Edison. He's long gone. You know, the people that talk to Thomas Edison, uh, pretty much completely all gone. The people that talk to the people involved in a lot of this stuff are pretty much gone. And so we must do our best to share this stuff if we can. And so I'm trying to do it here to remember some of the things. And something else comes to mind real quick, just to mention to it with the long play records of 1924-25. Theodore told me that they had a grinding plate, uh, diamond, to cut the shape of the diamond for the long play record, and he said it was shaped like a football. Very, very narrow and long, and the failure rate was tremendous on making those needles. But that's another story, but uh, we'll talk about other things as time goes on. Just wanted to share the cinema music system with you, one of the ideas of Theodore Edison.